Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to be talking about the floating wire technique uh, for stenting aorto-osteal lesions. So this is a, a fairly common scenario. Um, you have a fairly severe osteal RCA lesion. Uh, you've wired it, you've pre-dilated it, and now you have to place the stent. Uh, you're going to try to nail the osteum and not hang too much stent out in the aorta. But where exactly is the osteum? Um, the usual approach is to take a few shots in different views and then essentially guesstimate uh, where the start of the osteum is. Um, if you want to get fancy, you could use IVIS, uh, but with the usual six French guides, IVIS usually just helps with your guesstimating since you have to remove the IVIS catheter before you can advance the stent in. If you had a larger guide, you could simultaneously IVIS and advance the stent at the same time, but this is kind of a pain and most of us don't routinely do PCI uh, with eight French guides. So is there a better way? Well, as it turned out, uh, yes, uh, you could use the floating wire technique. Um, the floating wire technique uh, gives you a very systematic way of finding the osteum uh, without needing to take many shots and end up guesstimating anyway. It's very reliable and there is little risk um, that you will actually miss the osteum. It does not require any more than a six French guide and importantly it is fast and easy and hence uh, I am a fan. So how do you do it? Uh, so step one, uh, you wire the vessel with a working wire, uh, such as a BMW, and pre-dilate the lesion as usual. In step two, uh, you slightly disengage the guide, and that's pretty easy with an osteo lesion, and you pass the second wire uh, well out uh, into the aorta. I usually use another workhorse wire, such as a pro water. Um, this second wire is the floating wire, and its main job is to keep the guide from actually cannulating the vessel, in this case, the RCA. Now, very importantly, uh, make sure that the floppy part of the floating wire is well away from the vessel. This is because the floppy part of the wire uh, is usually not stiff enough uh, to prevent the guide from entering the vessel, which is the whole point of having the floating wire. Only the more proximal non-floppy part of the wire is stiff enough to do that. Uh, step three, uh, you advance your stent uh, well into the vessel uh, beyond the ostium. And step four, uh, you uh, loosen your TUI and advance your guide forward over both wires and the stent delivery catheter. You keep advancing the guide until it stops advancing. Uh, the floating wire will stop the guide from advancing right at the ostium. And then you keep maintaining forward pressure on the guide and back tension on the stent and the working wire. And step five, and this is the key step uh, for the floating wire technique. Uh, you pull the stent back as you're applying forward uh, pressure on the guide and then align the proximal dot of the stent with the tip of the guide. Pulling the stent back will suck the guide in, as it usually does, especially if you're keeping forward pressure on the guide. But the floating wire will mechanically stop the guide right at the ostium and prevent the guide from actually entering the vessel. Now remember, this is a key step for this technique and where uh, things can go wrong. Because if the guide isn't pushed well against the ostium, you'll end up hanging a lot of stent um, out in the aorta. After uh, you've satisfied that uh, uh, your guide is well pushed against the ostium of the vessel and the dot is aligned with the tip of the guide, uh, you go ahead and deploy the stent and as per usual routine, you post dilate and then you flare the proximal edge of the stent at high pressure or with an osteo flash balloon if your lab uh, carries it. IVIS is then often helpful to make sure that things look good. So um, for our patient, uh, we've got the uh, BMW down the RCA and a pro water in place as the floating wire uh, well out uh, in the aorta. Uh, as we're applying forward pressure on the guide, the stent uh, was pulled back, uh, which further sucked in the guide, and we aligned the dot of the stent with the tip uh, of the guide. Uh, we did a test injection here, which uh, is uh, usually not necessary, but you'll notice how far back the ostium of the RCA actually is. Uh, it's often a lot farther back than you would uh, think. So uh, we went ahead and deployed the stent and uh, noticed that as the stent balloon goes up, 
uh, the guide will be pushed back uh, by the inflated uh, stent balloon. And uh, here is the immediate uh, post-stent result. The ostium looks great, uh, but the flow distally is somewhat sluggish, uh, maybe from embolization of uh, plactivary. We gave some uh, vasodilators and uh, flared the proximal stent edge. And here's the uh, final angiographic result, which we thought looked quite good. Uh, Ivis uh, showed one stent cell segment uh, protruding into the aorta, uh, which is exactly uh, what we were hoping to achieve. Okay, so uh, take home messages. Um, the uh, floating wire technique is uh, probably quite underutilized, but it is a quick and fairly easy way to systematically and reliably locate the ostium of a vessel. The ostium is often a lot farther back than you think. There is very low risk of a geographic miss of the ostium if you use this technique, and there is no guesstimating involved. The main drawback is the possibility of hanging too much stent in the aorta. So remember this tip. Uh, when aligning the stent dot to the tip of the guide, it's very important to maintain forward pressure on the guide against the ostium uh, with the floating wire in place. Thank you for watching.